All right, welcome to part two of my demonstration on databases here. In the previous part, we created a plant record, plant class here, and we used the plant context and the plant class to create our migrations, to create our database, and then we put that all in there. And now in this part, part two, I wanna show you how we can use this. So we have this stuff in place, and now I'm going to go to Home Controller. The Home Controller has a bunch of things in it. I'm going to go ahead and remove. I don't need this this uh, logger stuff, so I'll pull that out. And I'm going to create a new, well, constructor for my controller. And so this one is my private, and I have the um, plant context. So I'm going to use a plant context. And this is going to be called, well, let's call it context. And I'm going to use a getter and setter. And now I'm going to have my constructor pass that in. So I do public, and this is my uh, home controller. And I'm going to pass in the plant context let's call it a ctx and we're then going to set our context from above equal to what gets passed in so the ctx all right so at this point our controller now has the ability to get stuff whenever we pass things in we can use that to use it below when we're doing our our posts and our gets and things like that. So what we want to do now is have our index page, maybe we have an index page, display all of the plants. So if we remember from before, if we go up to view and we go to our SQL server object explorer, we can see our plant database, it's a local database and databases we have plants and we have tables in here and we can right click this and we can view the data and see all of our plants if we want to see that on a web page we can have a list of all of our plants and just display it so let's go ahead and do that so our index page if it is a get then it'll be an http get so I'll put our marker there. And I want to get something into my view bag. So I'll do view bag. And this will be a plants. And just some name. And I'm going to now grab the context or grab from the context a list of all my plants. And if we go back to the context, the plant context, there is a plants data set so we're going to grab our plants and then we're going to convert that into a list so we do our context and then plants and then we're going to do a conversion into a list so let's do to list And we can pass this um, in this index or later in other things. But what we're going to do right now is just display the list. And that's pretty easy to do because we have it in our view bag, which is getting passed through. So we have this view bag plants. And then when we go over to our view, we can now display all of the plants. So we'll go over to our view. And we have our index right here. And we can delete all this content here because we don't need it anymore. So just delete that. And maybe we'll put a plant database title there. And below this, we want to have our list. Now, the list can be done as a table or it can be done as a bulleted list. And it doesn't really matter how you want to do it. You just have to make a decision and start writing it out. So, Let's go ahead and make this a table. So do 
table. And then I'll do maybe a table head. And in our plant, we had the plant ID, the name, the type, and the count. So we'll just do the name, the type, and the count. And then we'll have something in here to remove things and add things and make modifications. So table, table row, and table header. And we'll call this a name. Oops. Actually, no, that's right. And then table header and type and then count type and count all right so we have that now now we want our table body and in this table body we're gonna have a table row for each plant and then we're gonna have a table data with a name, a table data with a type, and a table data with a count. Now, we're going to be using the view bag. So for this, we want to loop over the view bag. So we're going to use a for each loop right here. So we'll do a for each and I'm going to do a var and we'll call this plant for each plant in view bag dot plants. I have an open thing here and I can cut that out and at the bottom of the table row, I can close it. And inside of this, now I can use the plant. So I can do at plant and give it a name at plant and the type and I can do plant count so I go ahead and save that and the view probably wants to have a model plant so that it's happier for later things we're going to do. So I go ahead and I save this, and now I'm going to run this and see if it actually works. So we run it, it fires up my browser, and we can see the list right here the name shows up, the type and the count is showing up. It's an ugly table, I get that. We can maybe do some CSS stuff if we want, or we can just go ahead and do a border equals two right here, and then save that. And then it'll look a little prettier for now. But I wanna do a little bit more. I can see the data, but I wanna be able to edit the data, or I want to be able to you know, add new data, or remove data even. So I'll go ahead and do another uh, table header right here, and then we'll have a an edit button and a table header right here, and we'll do a maybe a remove. And then down here, I'm going to have a couple more things because I want to be able to add these. Now, one of the easiest ways to handle this is to have a well, to have a ASP route ID in there. So I can tell it I'm passing in, well, the plant data, and then if I give it a route ID, then I can pass in the plant ID as the route ID, and I'll be fine, and I can edit it. So the first one is the edit. So I'll do an A link, so A, ASP controller. And the ASP controller for this one is the home controller. So I will put this as home. And then I want to put in ASP action. 
And this one is going to be my, well, I'll call it edit. And then I am going to have an ASP route ID. And that is going to be the plant ID. So I can do at, oops, at plant, at plant ID. I believe that's what it looks like. So it's plant ID, just like that. Okay. And that will create my link. And then I can just type in edit right here. So it has some text to click on. The next one I want to do is the delete. And the delete is actually pretty much the same. I could do copy that and paste it. And then I just change this from an edit to a remove. Okay. And this point, I should have my links in place. If I click on these, if I were to run this and click on these, it would crash because I don't have the controller in place. But we can take care of that now. So over here on the controller side, I have the index page. And this one right here is going to be the edit page. And this is going to be the remove page. So I'll go over to this controller and I will do another HTTP get. And I do a public I action result. But this one, because I am doing, I'm passing in a controller, <clears throat> I can use an ID. So I'm passing, oh, crash control, I'm passing in the um, ID. So I can use an int ID here. And then I can do a lookup and do some stuff with the actual record. So. I am going to go ahead and look it up. So do a var plant equals, and I have my context. So I use the context dot plants dot find. And find only works if you have an ID. Otherwise you have to do some kind of a query. So we're going to just use this, but I find the ID. And so that looks up the individual plant that I'm looking up. And then after I have found that, I can do some kind of an edit. So I need to have an edit page now. So let's go ahead and create a new view. Add a view and we'll call this our edit view. Add. We'll call this edit. And we'll get the, the content of the view later, but right now I just delete everything. But I do know it's going to be a model plant. And it's going to be probably an edit. So I'll call it my edit or plant, plant edit editor. So I'll go back over here to my controller. And now I, <clears throat> I have this thing in place. And because I know which thing is being loaded, it's going to be the edit page which is being loaded. And I can just now do a return. And I can set it to the model that I just loaded. So plant, get the path out to that. And then it can display the plant contents right there and allow it to even edit it. So I'll save that. And then I'll go over and I'll look at this plant edit page and see what I'm doing here. So in the plant edit page, I need to have a form and I can do an ASP action and decide what page I'm going to. So this one I'm going to send to my index page, just assuming that I'm going back there and my method is going to be a post. And what I want to display is the contents that I'm going to be editing. 
So I've got an input type, actually I'll type in ASP um, 4, and this is going to be the name. And maybe we'll actually want to have a label before it. So we'll do a label ASP4 name. And I'm put the name here so they can see that this is the name. And I'll do a little break here. I'll do the same thing over again for the next one. ASP4 equals type. Now, ideally, you'd have some kind of a drop down, but we're not going to worry about that right now. And then I'll have an input right here ASP4 type and break there. And then a little label ASP4 count. And I'll have an input as well for this one. <clears throat> now I also need to have a an ID so that I know which one I'm editing. And so I'll do a input type equals hidden. And this one will be my um, ASP4. And I will call this my plant ID. And it will pass over the plant ID and set the value inside of this so that I don't have to worry too much. Then I just need a submit button. So I'll do a button and type equals submit. And I will just call it save for now. All right. So at this point, it should have an editing page that now allows you to edit the contents of a plant. And so we can go back over here. We can see there's an edit button. It should trigger my home controller to go to the edit page with the route ID of the plant ID in the home controller. That ID comes in as this ID right here. It is then looking up the plant. The plant is then passed as a model to the view, which then gets to run it. So we'll go ahead and run this and see what bugs we have to correct. If yeah, any. So it pops up and it displays my plants. I click the edit button for my rose flower. And now it displays rows, flower, account three. Let's increment the count to four. Click save, and it goes back to the index page, but it crashes because we don't have anything to handle inputs of an HTTP post type. So I'll go ahead and do that. HTTP post. This is public. I action result. And next, and I'm going to pass in my model. This is my plant model. And then I want to have the same thing displayed as I have up here. But I also want to do other things, um, such as handle things and, and figure out what actions are being passed in here. At this point all right so now um, we're going to test this and see if it does in fact go back here um, it won't do anything with the data so it should just um, take you back here and hopefully this time it won't crash so I can go here increment the number and click Save and it doesn't do anything which is exactly what we expected but now we want it to actually save the data so if I go back to my post right here, and this time, instead of just grabbing the list, I'm going to update the list. 
So I'll do a context and I will do uh, plants update and then I'll pass in this model right here. And then um, we want to save it. So we'll do context save changes. So this will be our um, update context context or update plant maybe plant and save yeah. and then we want to get our list of plants and display them display plants all right so i'll go ahead and run this and this time i can edit this change it to four save it and it updates and it changes to four in here so that's exactly what we want however there's one more thing we want to do we want to be able to add things to our database and remove them so let's go ahead and take care of those things the remove seems like the easy one because that's pretty much what we already have we just have to get the, another um, http get and we'll just paste it here and then update it to be remove instead of the edit. And this one, um, we are going in here and we are basically just, uh, well, you find that plant and you remove it. So we found the plant. And we will now do a context plants remove and we'll remove the plant and then we want to not pass in this thing right here instead we want to go back to um, the index page so let's do Right here, we'll do index. So we don't need to pass much over, but we do need to get our list of plants because we got to display something. So we add to our thing right here. So we are going to remove the plant. We need to save that as well. Context save changes and then we want to display the plants we'll test that one and well we can test it right now all right so let's make sure that the remove does in fact work it doesn't crash so i'll go ahead and um click uh, well one of these removes so let's click uh rows and remove it and it removes it. We probably want to change the text now because we don't want it to say edit. We want it to say remove. Okay. Now we want to have another one that adds a plant. So we will copy this um, thing right here. And at the top, we're going to add something right before our table. We're going to have an add button right here. It looks like a remove button, so we'll change the action to an add. But we don't actually want it to be add. We want this to be an edit. But we want to pass it the route ID of zero. And we'll have this be an add button. Oops. And we can break here just in case. So now what we have is an add button that goes to the edit page with a route ID of zero. So we'll go to the edit page. Well, this should be fine, right? I mean, it's looking like it's a clean, nice page, but we might want to change what it says here. I mean, if you're adding one, maybe you should say add. We'll look at the controller. So if we go to the edit page, if we get 
a value of zero passed in here, we know that we're trying to add instead. So we can have this stuff right here change a little bit. We can say if uh, ID is greater than zero, then we can do this stuff right here. Otherwise, we're going to assume that we're doing an add. So we will do return view, except instead of returning this plant, we're going to do new plant. So that should take us to a new place. And because we are trying to figure out what we're doing, we can have our view bag and maybe we'll have our button equal to add right here. And up here, we might have our button say something different. So we'll do view bag button equals save. And now all I need to do is just use the view bag button for the button. So I'll go back to my edit button and I will change this to be my view bag button. So if <clears throat> we are creating one, it'll have a plant ID of zero. And then when we click the button, whatever the button says, it will take us to our index page for the post. So we go back to the controller of the index page and figure out what happens. So where does the index page go? It's right here. This is our post for the index page. So this time we need to either add one or update it. <clears throat> so if the model plant ID is greater than zero, we need to update it. Otherwise, we are going to create it instead. So else, we're going to context plants add or model and then we're going to save our changes all right so this should allow us to add plants so let's go ahead and run our program and see if we have any bugs and see if it's running correctly so I go through and I click the add button, takes me to blank one. I'm going to type in a rose and this is a flower and I count five, add that in there and it shows up. Now I go and add another one. I'll do spruce. This is a tree and count two. So now it shows up as well. I can go ahead and remove things as well, or I can edit them. So editing the spruce, looks like it's fine. I can update it to three, save it. The spruce is updated to three. I can remove the rows again, and it's back down. So at this point, you can probably see how to do this database modifications. We have the addition, of rows to the table. We have updating current rows. We have listing all the rows. And we also have removing rows right there. So this should help you get started.